Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor from Johnson County Community College. In this short screencast, we're going to continue our discussion of JavaScript.info, the modern JavaScript tutorial, section 2.4 variables, which is a very important lesson. As JavaScript.info teaches us, a variable is simply a named storage space for a piece of data. If we look at that in Visual Studio, we declare a variable with two different JavaScript keyword, let or const. Const is short for constant. The let keyword allows that variable name to be reassigned later on. So later on in my script, if I wanted to assign customer to a new customer who came to my website, I could certainly do that. But because company has been declared with the const keyword, I cannot reassign company to some other value, else that's going to throw an error in my console. It's going to stop my script. That's the difference between let and const. The older way of declaring a variable was with the keyword var, V-A-R, short for variable. We can also use var in the modern JavaScript. However, let and const are more modern and do have some benefits that help prevent some errors. For more information on let versus const versus var, please see my YouTube on that specific subject. But in the beginning, when you're first learning JavaScript the modern way, use let and const and if and when you would have an edge case where you would need to use the old var, well, at that point in your career, you'd know that you needed it. So we're going to stick with let and const for this demonstration. Now, when you assign a string or a true or false, which is called a Boolean, or a number to a variable, it's called a primitive. And it's called a primitive because it's just one value. A primitive can be a string. It can be a true or false. It can be a number. If we happen to declare a variable and we don't assign a value to it, it's given the value of undefined. That's another type of primitive. And if we declare a variable and we assign it to null, that means we are specifically assigning it to nothing, meaning there was no associate in the sale. Those are all called primitive. A string, a true-false, a number, whether it's a decimal number or an integer, undefined or null. Are all called primitives because they're one value. We can also have variables that store a list of values. That's called an array. An array is simply a list of values that get assigned to a variable name and identified with the square bracket syntax. So that's another type of variable, a list of values versus a primitive. Finally, we can have an object variable. Here's a variable name and it's assigned to an object. I know it's an object because of the curly braces. And then instead of just lining up the values in sequential order as we do in an array, we give all the values a name. So the variable name is prod1 for product1. It's got a name piece of information, a cost piece of information, a color piece of information, and a logo piece of information. So these pieces of information are given names called keys. Now we're going to get into arrays and objects later on. But I just want you to know at this point in time when you Declare a variable name with the let JavaScript keyword, you can assign it to a primitive, you can assign it to an array, or you can assign it to an object. And the assignment of that is done the same way. It just depends on what comes after the assignment statement. And that brings me back to perhaps the most important point of this lesson, the equal sign. When you see the equal sign in all modern languages, I want you to say is assigned to. I used to say is set to, and either one works, but I think assigned to is even a little bit better because after all, that's what that character is. It's the assignment statement. It is very different than an algebra equal sign where you have a teeter-totter situation going on and what you do to the left, you also do to the right. So the equal sign in computer science is perhaps the most misunderstood character. It is not like math class. It's the assignment statement. So what it says is take whatever's on the right and stick it in the left. Whatever's on the right and stick it on the left. Whatever's on the right and stick it in the left. And I have many different YouTubes on that assignment statement, particularly my math series that might help you differentiate how we use these characters in computer science class with how we use them in math class. If you can get your mind around that, you're going to go far in JavaScript or whatever programming language you're studying. We've done all these assignment statements. We've created all these variables, but we still haven't really done anything on the web page except 
link this test.js file to our template file through the script tag. So nothing thrilling is really going on. I'm not console logging out anything. I'm not alerting anything on the web page. I'm simply showing you how to set up variables. Another important part of this lesson is variable naming, the rules by which you can use to name your variables in JavaScript. If I go back to Visual Basic, I've made a few comments here about identifiers in JavaScript, and really variables have identifier names, and also functions that we create later have names, and the names that we use to name our variables or our functions are the same. So that's why we sometimes use the word identifiers versus variable naming, because identifiers is a little bit broader but the rules are the same for both variable names and functions. They may not start with a number, they may not include any special characters except for dollar sign and underscore, and they are case sensitive. So the variable name, all lowercase apple versus a capital A apple are two separate, completely different variable names. So sometimes we have a set of style rules that we use to identify our variable names and our function name. And that goes back to the company style guide. And for JavaScript, quite commonly, the style guide will say, use camel casing for your variable names for all your identifier names, such as first capital N for name and last capital N for name. When we look at our lessons, they will give you some examples of some valid names, username and test one, two, three, numbers are perfectly fine. Even the dollar sign is a valid variable name even though it's not very descriptive, the underscore is a valid variable name, even though it's not very descriptive and somewhat cryptic. 1A is not a valid variable name, identifier name, because it starts with a number, and my dash name is also not valid because it includes a dash, and the only special characters we can include are the dollar sign and the underscore. There are some reserve names. Those are all the JavaScript keywords, such as if, let, const class return function, those are reserved for JavaScript and cannot be used for our variable or identifier names. And be sure you start your script with use strict, which will help prevent some typos as we learned in the previous lesson. Thank you.